eventually I truly believe that our community is going to step up and help us uh, renovate schools that need to be renovated. Tonight only on First Coast News, we're one on one with Duval County's superintendent to find out what comes next in the fight about the schools where you send your children. Welcome to the First Coast News at 11. I'm Jeff Vallon. For most of this year, Duval Superintendent Dr. Diana Green has called for Jacksonville to give the green light to let you, the voter, decide about a half cent sales tax projected to raise $2 billion to fix crumbling schools. So far, City Council and City Hall have refused, and that battle has already landed in court. On your side, Kaylee Tracy is live at school board headquarters tonight. Kaylee, you spoke with the superintendent and a school board member at an event today where school is getting an upgrade. Question is, where is that money coming from? Yeah, Jeff, well, at that event today, the La Villa School of the Arts, they received a new mural and landscaping there. And just like you said, who's paying for that? Well, I found out that the company, the construction company that actually built the school, they footed the bill for that, and they're in a partnership with the school there. But I did ask the superintendent and the school board member who were there at the event, well, what is the latest in their fight to try to get the city to pay for upgrades and repairs like the one today? Sunday, teachers and students at La Villa School of the Arts celebrated the school's 20th anniversary and unveiled a splash of color at the school. We um, did the landscaping project and then also enhanced it by adding the mural um, to beautify the front of our school for our guests, for our students. The project, a partnership with the Haskell Construction Company who built the school and paid for the mural. School board member Daryl Willie says schools may have to rely on relationships like that one to help repair and upgrade schools in the city. Uh, we have to figure out how do we create the partnerships, whether it's city partnerships, whether it's private partnerships like the ones with Haskell today, where we can get our schools up to the level where we want them to be. This comes after the school district's day in court with the city earlier this month about repairing the schools. The school district and teachers union sued the city in September for delaying a sales tax referendum that would raise money to build and repair schools. We're going to continue to, to provide the support for our older facilities as we continue to move forward. Those representing the city say the school board doesn't have the authority to hire its own lawyers because it's part of city government. But board members say they'll keep fighting for the referendum to repair city schools. We're still wanting to move forward with this conversation and figuring out how we can get there. So the conversation is still happening. We're moving forward to try to make sure we can make it happen because our kids deserve it. Willie also says the district's case may get a boost after a group of parents filed their own lawsuit against the city. Superintendent Green says she'll do everything she can to help her students while the lawsuit works its way through the courts. My number one focus is on the day-to-day -day operations of the school district and that's what I'm going to continue to focus on, ensuring that we can uh, keep our facilities working, make sure that our schools have the resources that they need, and all of that other stuff I'm lead to attorneys to deal with. Now that hearing earlier this mo month mainly focused on the question of whether or not the school board is a uh, part of the city's government, but there is another hearing scheduled for later this month, and we'll be sure to keep you updated on that on air and online. But for now, Kaylee Tracy, First Coast News on your side.